Welcome to David Needs He Always No Explanation Podcast number five. Yes. Five. Cinco. And today's a special one because we're going to talk about something that I know a little bit more about than you usually or even. And this one's going to be on MMA, UFC 279. You, all our podcasts you can listen to, listen back. And you can listen to it a year from now, 10 years from now, and it'll still last the test of time today will be temporary because there's an event happening this saturday in las vegas t-mobile arena i'm getting hyped up a little bit but what's <laughs> interesting about mma is is nishi's dad is a pastor and i asked him at a bible study question that is watching mma a sin and at first he said no and then we dug deeper into the bible he said well you're hurting one another so maybe it is where, where do you stand on this uh, I don't know. Personally, I I don't like to watch it because it's very violent and there's a lot of blood. And it's not that I don't like to watch it because blood grosses me out or hitting grosses me out. But like there's a point where I don't want that part of me because you you know what I mean? Like you you're yeah, growing and that part of you is like that anger, that energy, like you're you're feeding that. And so just like in the Bible times, like when they would put two Christians and have them fight or they would put animals and watch them get eaten up. I feel like UFC MMA is like that same spirit where you're cheering on someone hurting another person. And it's like I feel like, yeah, that could definitely be detrimental to you you know um but would i go as far as to say it's a sin to watch it i don't think i would necessarily say that um so yeah and i i do want to bring you to an mma event that's the I, yeah he wants to bring me to one but i don't i don't think i want to go to one because like i said would like you go to one though no i don't think i would because i'm a very violent person <laughs> You don't know how many times my siblings have told me Nisi violence is not the answer. And so I don't know. I don't want to feed that part of me because what if I love it? And now I'm getting excited, like knock him out, knock him out. And I'm like, mm, I know how I am. I think I should stay away from something like that. I'm going to want to be in the rink knocking someone out. I think this is a good longer format question as well, because we can identify it from different angles. I think it's interesting because I've been to football games. I've been to basketball games. I've been to baseball, tennis matches. And it's nothing like being to a boxing or MMA match or fight. And they say you don't play fighting. You don't play boxing. You play football. You play basketball. You play tennis. But you don't play fighting. And you're right. There's something different. There's a different level because you're actually trying to injure your opponent. That's how you win. And by getting more points by doing so. And it electrifies the crowd. When you break someone's arm, when you knock someone out, when there's blood pouring out. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, like I was raised to control my anger. That anger is a bad thing. But really? I think a lot of times in fights, it's like channel that anger, use that anger because, you know, people could say it's, it's all just a sport. I'm not mad. But no, those fighters are mad, especially when they get punched in the face and, you know, people are booing them. Those fighters, they're channeling that anger and they're using that anger. And I think that um, that could be that could be a bad thing, especially as a Christian, you know what I mean? Like to channel that anger. Well, I know. talked to you a little bit of jujitsu and which is interesting. And she uses the jujitsu against me. I'm like, wait, hold up. How'd you get out of that? <laughs> How'd you sweep me? I'm like, I want to be careful not to teach you too much. Cause if you get really angry, you might just like break my arm, put me in a Kimura, put me in Americana. Like you might just go haywire. But yeah. I really like boxing honestly. And I think that I could like UFC if it wasn't so violent like, I think there's a point to where you can, because they're skilled. There's no doubt about that. They're skilled, right? Martial artists. Exactly. And so I think there's a point to where, like, okay, I would love to see that skill. But when you start hitting people in the face, knocking teeth out, blood everywhere, that just seems like, okay, what's the point in that? That's like, it's no. Too. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. Like, both of these sports, like, people are taking them to the point where it's so violent. And it's like, these could be amazing sports if there was, I feel like there shouldn't be headshots. These people are dying. There's a fighter died. I, I heard a news story of a fighter dying from getting hit in the head. And it's like, what other sport, like you can literally kill someone and get away with it in MMA. Well, and Muhammad UFC. Ali did bring up a good point. He said that there was in race car, you hit a wall, the race car driver might die. There's always that risk of something happening. But another. that's you. That's not another person. Like me hitting you is different than you crashing into a tree or you doing something. But it's still a part of the sport. Exactly. But that's giving me the right to not only am I angry, I'm beating you up. I purposely did that headshot. You die and I'm get off scotch free. 
How is that? There should be no sports where anyone is being killed. We're humans here. Well, it happens in football. That's not, okay. Yeah, but so football, football there's banned? accidents. Don't get me wrong. There's accidents that happen all the time. You could, people have died from basketball. People have died from volleyball. Bro, how do they ball? Die well, from in basketball, and basketball, like no let's one's say died you, from an elbow or being fouled. Yes. No, never happened. I'm sure it has happened at least never, once. Never, never. Let's happened. look it up. You have your computer okay, right there. I have, has anyone no ever, died? Has ever While died? Well, he looks that up. Basketball. My point is that MMA it happens way more than in any other sport. Why? Because you're allowed to take headshots, you're allowed to choke people out, and so it's like when you're being entertained to the point where you can kill people for entertainment. That how is that how is that right? How is that good? And for the people watching it, like I've gone to hockey games, and I'm the kind of person who's like fight, fight, fight. Like that's the only thing I like about hockey games. Violent. Yes, but that's like, oh, they hit him with the stick. They do a little push and this and that. But in MMA, the entire thing is fight, fight, fight. Even if till the death, fight, fight, well, fight. Well, they're not fighting to the death. There's rules. There's time. Yeah, there's but people have referee. died. No one's died in, in basketball from an elbow. Nothing. No I contact. I just looked it up. No one has ever in the no, entire world. No. Okay. Never well, happened. There you go, guys. Stick to basketball, not MMA. Exactly. I mean, the basketball players don't get head trauma. So it's just that's what it is. However... That would be a good long format this Saturday. And she knows, but she really doesn't care because she doesn't really care about MMA. Like I do. It's when you know someone on a personal level, you spent time with them, you broke bread with them, then it becomes a little bit more personable. So when I know someone that's fighting or even if someone's in the NFL, I'm like, I can call you on the phone. I want that player to win his team. I don't care about football, but I want him to win. So you don't care about UFC? No, I don't, I don't, I care about people that I know. That so you don't care about UFC, you just care about the people you know? Correct. Okay. Yeah, personally. So who do you know in UFC? So this Saturday, Nate Diaz is taking on Hamzat Shemaev, who is... Hamzat Shemaev? He's Chechen, Russian, out of Sweden. They signed Nate up to get killed. I don't think that's going to happen, but... When you spend time with someone and know their psyche. I mean, Nate was the first one. I, I've t- told you this before. Take me on a 10-mile run and I complained. I was like, I can't run 10 miles. He didn't say we were running 10 miles. But they're all professional fighters. So I feel like they're all going to have a good workout, a good mindset. Because that's what they're, they're, they're training since they're little. Well, I'm saying he helped instill in me. Him and his brother, Nick, helped instill in me different elements of training. How I look at life even. Right? I use a quote that Nick told me. He said... You do things that you got to do to get to where you need to be. I'm like, okay, I'm going to steal that quote because it's so true in life. I do things that I have to do to get to where I need to be. And so this Saturday, it's supposedly uh, Nate's last fight on his UFC contract. How old is Nate? I believe he's 37. And it's his last fight. How many fights has he done? He's had about 30 fights. And how many has he lost? He's lost. I'll tell you his record right now. But this guy he's fighting has never lost. And most of his finishes. But how many fights has this guy had? 12. See, so 12 and 30 is a big difference. So he's at, Nate's had 33 fights. This is going to be number 34. But the And the other guy's in his prime. So. But how many has Nate lost? 15, 6. Dang. 13. He, so he's he's lost less than half. Right, but still, this guy's never lost. So, but this guy only has twelve. That's not even half of what Nate has. Right, but then again, you look at the age too, right? So, how old is this guy? Shemayev is twenty-eight, so he's. I mean, that's not that almost ten years. Well, I mean, that's in their prime, right? That's a prime age. Mm. So, my question to you is, and and for me, I'm going to always be a little bit biased. I I want. So, who do you think is going to win the fight? I don't know who's going to win. Who do you think? If you if someone said you have to, to put a million dollars okay, in I'm one. I'm going to show you. And this is how she's basing who's going to win off pictures. She knows nothing about how they fight, their styles. How else would you base it? Like, I'm going to look at these two pictures and I'm going to okay. tell you who's going to win. I'll post this. I'll put my money in it. This picture is going to go up on the screen. It's going to be the same picture you see. So Wait, did you get a good picture of both of them? Because I want it to be fair. Shemayev on the left and Nate on the right. Okay, Nate looks sad, first of all. <laughs> Like, he looks skinny, and I know you tell me that skinny's good in fighting. Well, it, it right because you don't want to be too mus- muscular because then it takes more oxygen. But Nate looks scared. He already looks scared. But he's not facing. He's this just, guy looks confident. This guy looks like I'm about to handle Nate. 
this weekend. Like this guy looks like he's ready to conquer the world. Young lion. I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling the energy with Nate. He's like, oh, I'm scared. I'm old. I'm a, I'm gonna try and fight. You know, but I don't know. So if I had to put my money based off these pictures, if I had to put my money, Mashkashka, what's his name? Shemayev. Shemayev, one hundred percent is gonna win. How many rounds do they go in UFC? Five rounds, five minutes. Shemayev is gonna beat him by the second round. Oh, you think he's gonna finish him? Oh, for sure, for wow. sure. And and that's like ninety nine percent of the fans out there, which is crazy. Like you just took the the fan favorite, right? Well, I don't know. I could just look at these pictures. I don't know if you gave me a bad picture of Nick well, or Nate. Nate. But he but he does not look ready for a fight. The bottom left. You, you this one? Oh, your your computer's not a touch screen. There he goes. There's another one. I still like this guy because even when this guy smiles, he looks creepy. He looks like oh, he's I'm a, a killer. Dude. He says he's a killer. He says yes, he and Nate just gangsters. looks like Nate looks like oh, I'm from like Stockton, Stockton, or like Stockton, like from the streets and like the world did me so hard but this guy just looks like like i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna conquer you hands down this guy's gonna win nate doesn't have a chance nate shouldn't be even be entering the ring that's what many people are saying i mean that's what oh yeah this guy's that's definitely what some of the win. media are saying that's what fans are saying the thing is i'm putting a million dollars in his tub well you wouldn't win much money because he's a huge favorite he's like a tw- uh almost a 12 to no, he's more than that. And you're going to be rooting Almost, for so Nate? So you would, you would have to put down $1,800 to win $100 if you went on Shemaya. So there has to be someone out there rooting for Nate. Oh, there's a lot. Nate has a big fan base. A lot of people will be rooting for him, but the casual MMA fans and those that just think that because Shemaya's on this tear, undefeated, he's just going to run through Nate. But Nate's boxed with Andre Ward, who's one of the greatest pound-for-pound pound boxers of this era he just retired he was a sparring partner of him i'm the kind of person who just feels like monster beats skill and i know that's like that could be wrong but like even with my sisters when they say like i'm gonna beat you because i've done boxing because i've done this because i weight lift i'm like i have adrenaline i have crazy and that guy gives me adrenaline crazy and if he has any bit of skill even if he has half of the skill, oh, skill. that nate has Power. i feel like he'll still beat nate because he just looks Here's monster who can beat monster what happens when he runs out of gas though if nate could bring him into deep waters what happens then he starts to get tired he's not gonna run out of gas he's oh, monster he, the, he, the 36 year old is gonna be the one running out of gas no nate's a triathlete yeah but nate's not gonna be able to keep up with monster trust me oh trust you trust me Jim. You may be the MMA expert, but I have eyes and I can see the situation. Shamaya was getting tired in a three round fight. He's never gone five rounds. Okay, this but you said he's won rounds. 12 fights. Right. Yeah, so he's 12 and why does he not go five rounds? Because he's beating them because before he's the not fifth right, round. Exactly. That's exactly what's going to happen to Nate. He's going to beat and him before that the fifth round. Could potentially happen. That will happen. Okay. Well, but what if he accidentally kills Nate? Would that be sad? <laughs> That's why there's a referee there. I know, but people still die. People do die, but. He's a trained martial artist. He's been around enough times. He's sparred, fought with world champions. But he's old. Here's the thing with Nate is there's old, but then there's miles to the tank. And and Nate doesn't have as many miles to the tank as someone that's 37 that had 50 fights because he'll go a couple years without fighting. So that's giving him time, his body time to rest. I mean, he gets cut up a lot. So he has had surgery to make sure. He I think, though, that when you take time to rest and step away from the game, like you may think, oh, I'm getting better. I'm training. But like you're out of the game. And so when you come back in it and someone hits you, you're going to be like, dang, like because you haven't felt that in a minute. So I don't think necessarily stepping away is a good thing. Like this guy's probably been fighting. He's in his prime, like you said, and he's going to go and be ready to conquer. Nate's going to get one hit and be like, whoa, OK, what's going on here? You know? So I don't know that stepping away and training is the best thing. You know what's crazy is she's not in MMA. She doesn't watch the fight. She walks out. But what she's saying is what the experts say as well. Cage rust or ring rust. It's interesting like you understand this, that some fighters that step away and don't fight for a while, they're rusty coming back. And, and that's what you're saying are all valid reasons. So it's interesting that I was just going to say you never watched a full MMA fight in your life. I haven't. And here you are. Sometimes I like watching the highlights where they knock each other out, but then I feel like I need to repent after. (laughs) So (laughs) that's cool. Why do you got to repent? Because it's so violent. It's, I don't know. Are you going to watch the fight Saturday? 
um like on tv yes i just want to see the part where nate gets knocked out why do you want to see him get knocked because out? i know he's gonna lose so i don't want to see the whole fight or maybe i will because i feel like it's gonna be a quick fight um maybe i will we'll see i'm gonna watch the fight live yeah yes wait Whether you're gonna go in person either in per either we're going oh or like on tv person live. or watching a live somewhere i, I wouldn't want to go in person because i feel like there's a lot of angry people there like a lot it's of a lot of electric- on steroids. It's a lot of electricity. And it's, like I said, in MMA, boxing matches, unlike anything else, it's electric. It feels like lightning and thunder. Nothing like it. Not any, a football game doesn't match this. And I think it'd be interesting for you to just go to one. I don't know. But I did go to Nick's fight in September of last year, almost, oh, well, almost a year ago. And it's interesting because he had him fighting him while and was sad. He lost to... Who? His brother, Nick, Nick? lost See, to Robbie Nick Lawler. Lost. But Nate's been training. He knows what he's getting into. He knows what he's up against. And even he said that, look, you're you're supposed to beat me, dog. You're supposed to take me out. Oh, he will, Nate. He will take you out. But here's the question. Do you think that they rig these fights? Or is there any of no. that going on? Like in Maybe, the, maybe on, the, on some other promotions. But you think this one's going to be a straight fair fight? Like no one's going to give, give in? It's a fair fight. Right. Nate's going to be a cream Nate pie. is a lot smaller, though, than Chimaev. I mean, Nate can walk around at 200 pounds, but Chimaev can walk around, I think, like a 220. I thought you only fight in your weight. Well, they, they cut. They, Nate's going to probably cut to get to 170, probably like 20 pounds. And Chimaev's going to probably cut 30, 40 pounds to get to their weight. And then once they weigh in, they can eat and hydrate and then go back in weight, which is it's so unsafe for fighters to do. It takes a toll on your body and your head as well. But that's what fighters do because they don't, the more weight you can cut, the bigger you become in that division. Yeah, I feel like, like you said, Nate has had 34 fights and this other guy, Shamaya, has had 12. 33 and 12. And so, like, I already know you're making documentaries on CTE and stuff like that. So I'm thinking also the damage that is on Nate. Not only does he have more years, he has more fights, which probably means he has more damage. And so I just don't feel like he's going to be as sharp and he's going to be as fast as this guy because he has damage that happens as you, you put time in. Time so, and age. Exactly. And so Nate is lacking, not lacking, but he's lesser than Shamaya in every area. So it's like how, like if we just put these two on paper. Well, no, I would disagree because his jujitsu is going to be better. His boxing is going to be better. Shamaya will have better kicks, better wrestling. And so when you put these things together in the size, it's just what's going to happen when you, when they get thrown in the cage. And that's what what's so interesting about fighting is, right, you get in and there's only one referee stopping this fight. Sometimes they don't take enough time. So you can actually get, like you said, killed potentially, right, in, on TV. No one's died in the UFC, but people have definitely died in MMA. But it's one of those things like where you're going to war and they both have that war mentality. Chamayev... Mm-hmm. Is like this is a war. I'm not friends with him. And Nate's like, we're going to war. I'm not friends with him either. Like, I don't want to shake hands. So I don't like when they shake hands and hug. Here's a question: Where did Nate train in the U.S.? Yes. Because I don't know if you guys have noticed, and this might be stereotyping or whatever, but like in the Olympics, it tends to be other countries. There's just a different worth work ethic, right? And so I feel like you said this guy's from Russia. Like I feel like other countries have a better work ethic a lot of times than the United States. And even with you dealing with Dan Henderson and teaching him, he was training with like people from out of the country. Right. Right. Yeah. He went to go train in Russia, but then then he brought it back home too to train. Exactly. But he knew they like, they knew that they wanted to take them to fight against the Russians because they knew that that was going to be a a whole nother level than made him a better wrestler. Exactly. And so Part of and me Dan is Henderson like the double champion, the first double champ, by the way. Yeah. And so part of me is just like, this guy's from Russia. I feel like that if you weren't training in the U S if you grew up training somewhere else, you already have a stronger work ethic. It's sad, but that's you, United States. You get comfortable. And unless you have, unless Nate had someone who was from another country training him, if he had someone from the U S training him, I just don't feel like he has a chance against this Russian guy. Who's almost well, 10 I'll tell years you younger the than champs him right now. Right. And, and I'll go by country. Heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou is from France via Cameroon, so Africa. The light heavyweight champion is from Poland. The middleweight champion is from Australia via Nigeria. The one seven welterweight champion is from England. I'm still waiting for U.S. The 
lightweight champion is from, well, it's kind of vacant, but Brazil. Uh, Char- Charles Oliveira. The uh, so we have welterweight, lightweight. Then we have the featherweight, one forty-five. He's from Australia. I'm so, still not hearing you. So one thirty-five champ, Aljamain Sterling. Shout out to Aljo, American USA. The one twenty-five champ is from Mexico, uh, Brazil, Mexico. There's the two champs. So most of the champs are from out of the country. Right, currently they are, but at times it'll be a lot of Americans. I know, but like I feel right now, like not. the Americans know that they need to go train. Even in the women, the women Brazilian champion. Yeah, but the Americans know that they need to go train out of this country because this country is too comfortable. We do everything easy. Our moms put band aids on our little scrapes, and like you need to go outside of the country to get good hardcore training. America soft, period, and so. That's why I'm looking at this and I'm like, dude, this guy's from Russia. He's a killer. You You're a do, soft American. Differently. Stockton does not compare to what this guy wow. went through in Russia. Nate's not, the, the I'm not saying he's soft, soft, but I'm Trust saying me. like what is hard in the United States doesn't even compare to what is hard in Russia, to what is hard in China. Well, I mean, they're up. Like, they, they were on the street. They were father left. I mean, I know, but it's. Killings. The United States is so privileged. Like, but they, it but just doesn't compare. Not everybody grew up that way. That's why in boxing... I can just let the statistics speak for themselves. You just said that a bunch of the highest, best fighters are from different. And I'm not surprised at all. I would be very surprised if more were from the United there's States. There's actually a, a woman in the UFC, Carla Sparza. She's American, so out of the women, there's... there's Carla Sparza? Sparza. So she's from, she's from actually California. Then we have a Brazilian and Amanda Nunes. Julia Anna Pena was a champ, but she got beat. And again, I would want to see because even Dan Henderson was a champion, but he did go and train over there. So I'm not saying like there's people in the United States that take the time and say, hmm, I need to go over there and they go and train over there. So, yeah, they're from the United States, but their work ethic, their training is from out there. Or maybe they even have a trainer from Russia who's in the United States or from China or wherever who's training them. So, yeah, they're from the U.S., but they're training and their work ethic isn't so that's what i'm trying to say like i feel like the united states work ethic as a whole and oh, i would agree i would agree with the be. work ethic part right but when it gets to the top then some americans kind of shift their way away from the regular americans but now you're dealing with people from other countries where like you said they're training from poverty they're training from no family members and the poverty level of third world country is much different there than it is America. So you may you bring up some valid points. Saturday, we're going to see what the deal is. You take Chimaev. I'm saying anything can happen. I think Nate can win this fight. I think he could definitely There's come no through. There's no way on God's green earth. Oh, it, oh, under God's green earth, it could 100% happen. There's no way. Like He they, needs to go box Jake Paul, who is literally... And Don't get me started on Jake Paul. He, and that's, that's what's going to happen. He's going to fight. He's exactly. Box and Jake Nate, Paul, make Nate will do good payday. over there, but... In UFC with As this killer has no chance. No chance. We'll see how this ages next week. Stay tuned. I'm definitely gonna watch I'm definitely gonna watch the fight because now I'm invested. I'm invested in my killer Russian killing Nate. I'm invested in it. So I'm definitely gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it. And yeah, we're gonna and when, see. And if Nate pulls off the upset, then I don't wanna hear you for like a week. And when my Russian killer kills Russian Nate, killer? when he kills Nate you're not gonna, gonna call me queen. He's not gonna. He's you're not gonna, gonna call me Nate. queen for a week th- and bow thing, whenever gonna, I walk in the room. He's not gonna. Kill Let's me. practice, my queen. She needs to train for a week jiu-jitsu. when he wins. Pow! I'm excited. We're gonna have to like record us watching the fight so we can like we see our do, reaction. We, we could actually do a because I'm invested. I can. I can be a fan. We, I can be a. Fan. We could do a live podcast. That's what they do. They call a, a fight cast. Watching it and recording live. We'll see. Let us know in the comments who you think is going to win, who you're rooting for, who you're voting for. I'd love to hear that. Until next time. Peace out to the haters. Hater. Ha! <laughs>